Hi, this is Rich Wagner, Managing Director of Engineering at Mark, an authorized microchip design partner specializing in mobile apps. I'm going to walk through how to exchange data between a microchip RN4020 Pictel demonstration board and an iOS app over Bluetooth. For the demo, I'm going to connect the Pictel board to a computer via USB. And then on the computer, I have a terminal emulator that I'll use for communicating with the iPhone app. Because of this, I previously set the board to MLDP mode to enable all data from the UART to be sent to the peer device or the terminal emulator as a data stream. The scenario I'm going to simulate is how a smart Bluetooth enabled pool pump could interact with a mobile device to do various tasks such as adjust the pool temperature, get chemical readings, and turn the pump off and on, all from inside a mobile app. To begin, I'm going to connect the terminal emulator with the demo board. And I want to make sure Echo is turned on. Okay, the RN4020 board is ready and we have a window to the conversation that we're going to have with the iPhone app through the terminal emulator. On the iPhone, I'm going to launch the demo app called Blue Pool. And once loaded, it's going to scan for nearby Bluetooth devices and list them on this opening screen. I'm going to select the nearby RN4020 device. It's going to serve as my smart pool pump for this simulation. And once I do, the Blue Pool app is going to attempt to establish a connection with the Pigtail board. And if it's successful, then it's going to issue a simple ASCII command to the Pigtail board to get data. The refresh pool data command shows up in our terminal emulator while the iPhone app waits for a response. For data coming back to the client, I'll use a simple JSON structure that contains pool temperature, chemical readings, and pump status. For the demo, I'll copy this JSON from a text file and paste it into the terminal emulator to send back to the iPhone client. The data is received by the client from the Bluetooth connection, which in turn parses the data and notifies the presentation layer of an update. The current pool temperature is displayed in the first screen, the chemical data is shown in the second screen, and the pump control is provided in the third screen. Returning to the first screen, suppose I want to adjust the temperature remotely from the client. By sliding the dial, I send a command to the RN4020 to increase the temperature accordingly. And, as you would expect, this command shows up in our terminal emulator. Back on the pump control screen, you can see the pump is currently off, but by toggling the switch, I send a command to the RN4020 to turn on the pump. Back to the chemicals screen, I tap the refresh button to get a new full reading from the smart pump. On my computer, I paste a new JSON string with updated readings into the terminal and send back to the client, and then the client updates the UI accordingly. Just to confirm, you can see the temperature adjusted based on the latest results. So far, all the interactions have been initiated inside the iPhone app. However, suppose the smart pool pump has detected a chemical imbalance and needs to notify the client so that the pool owner can take appropriate action. To simulate this event, I'm going to send an alert notification to the iPhone client as a simple JSON structure. The iPhone app is in the background now, but it continues to listen for Bluetooth communications. And so, when the app receives the data, it sends a local notification to the user and displays the appropriate message. Here's a look at the Swift code used to power the Bluetooth communication with the RN4020 in the iOS app. In our controller, we initialize the core Bluetooth central manager, which is responsible for scanning, discovering, and connecting to Bluetooth peripherals. The controller serves as the core Bluetooth central manager delegate. As such, I need to define the delegate method that is called when Bluetooth peripherals are discovered. When the app is running and this method is called, it adds each of the discovered devices to a dictionary that is used by the app to display available Bluetooth peripherals to the user. Once the user selects a device to connect to inside the user interface, 
the connect to peripheral method is called. This is going to initiate a connection with a specific Bluetooth device. Next, once a connection has been established with a peripheral, the did connect peripheral delegate method is called. And inside of this, we first assign the controller as the delegate for the new peripheral. We then call its discover services method to see if it has appropriate support for the Bluetooth services that we require. I'm checking out three here, but for our purposes, I only really care about the microchip MLDP services. The CB peripheral delegate did discover services method is called when the attached peripheral sends services information back to the client. This allows you to examine the peripheral you connected to and ensure that it supports the services that you require. Services are collections of characteristics. So we want to drill down even further on the RN4020 by calling the peripherals discover characteristics method. We are looking in particular for MLDP data and control characteristics. The did discover characteristics for service delegate method is called when data returns from the connected peripheral. Once we know the Bluetooth characteristics available, we need to subscribe to it, which lets the peripheral know that we want the data it contains. And after this is done, a notification inside our app is triggered, indicating a successful connection. The app then calls the controller's send data method to ask for pump data. This is the method used anytime we want to send an ASCII command to the RN4020 inside the app itself. When the app receives data from the peripheral, it comes through the did update value for characteristic delegate method, which calls the parse incoming string method. Data comes in bytes of data at a time, so we want to collect the data and combine it into a string we can parse. Now, the parsing logic for this demo app is very rudimentary, so the basic idea is that once I find a closed bracket on incoming text, I will convert the string to a JSON structure and parse out the values. Now, if the type value is 1, the app knows it's a data reading and sends out a notification to the UI after collecting the data information. If the type value is 2, the app knows it's an alert message and will trigger an iOS local notification to prompt the user. Wrapping up. This demo demonstrates how you can exchange data between your iOS app and the RN4020 Pictel board. But on a broader level, it also shows how you can utilize the potential of the RN4020 Bluetooth Smart Module to power the Internet of Things. To find out more about the RN4020 Bluetooth Smart Module, go to microchip.com slash RN4020. And to find out more about Mark's services, go to mark.com.